whether on a smartphone, tablet, or desktop, this button is always available for you to create a new work rule. These three highlighted fields are the only ones that are required to uh, submit a work order. Now I'm just going to say I'm, let's say, a tenant or somebody at a hospital in a room that the temperature is too low. So please check my thermostat. Reference ID can be a matching number of any type of data field that will match with other software that you're currently using. I pick my category. In this case, it could be electrical. And the tenant can pick anything they want. Uh, obviously, the administrator has full right to edit this later on. Um, is it urgent? Everyone's going to pick urgent all the time. Notice this is it's not even in pending mode yet, so this we're, 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 the status hasn't changed. To save some time, I'm just going to copy and paste the title into a short description. Please, please, please help. This short description uh, becomes the subject line in the email to whoever is going to be attached to the work order. And that's all the information. At this point, the tenant can actually upload a file, and uh, whether it's the thermostat uh, showing that it's minus three in the room, etc. So all they have to do is click on save. And we've got a new uh, work order uh, that came in and it's pen it's in pending status mode. So now I myself uh, am the administrator. I need to approve the work order. I had I received an email from Max Panda saying that I have a new work order that needs my approval. The work order was please check my thermostat reference. There was no reference ID. I can put one in here right now if I wanted to. I can change the category. I can add new categories. It is an electrical issue at this time. This isn't urgent, the person is, is at work, so we'll just put low for now. I can approve it if I like to, but I'm going to uh, further add some information. I noticed uh, they, they did put in some uh, description and some notes here. The comment section is for my maintenance uh, personnel to add to. This won't take all day, so I'm just gonna uncheck that because this might actually be a 30 minute job. Shows who created the work order. Now I'm logged in, so I, I created my own work order. I can attach a file here or drag and drop right into this box. Uh, office documents, images, any type of information I want here. Take a picture from my iPhone and attach it, etc. Uh, I can select the location where the worker has to go. So in this case, it's at the church, church basement. I can select an asset. Thermostat is an Enterprise 5000. Um, do I want to have the maintenance person uh, allow access to any parts? Sure, we'll give him a light bulb. Maybe he needs to change light bulbs when he's checking the thermostat. I can select a staff member. I can actually uh, pick a vendor for them to come in and do the work instead of my uh, internal staff. You have full history here from pending mode because it's in pending all the way to the closing of the work order. You can add tasks before approving the work order, and I can, if I click on add task, all these tasks are in my library, and I can simply just click on one of the tasks, and it becomes uh, applied to the work order. Do I want to add an invoice? Not right now. The work has not been completed, and there was no attachments done, so I go up onto the top again, part of the work order. All I do is approve the work order. I'm happy with it, and two things happen. It went from yellow, uh, color change, to green, so green means go. Uh, whoever was attached to this worker work order did get receive an email uh, with, with the uh, information uh, to complete the work order. And at this point, I've got my dashboard here and I can filter my work order. So I can say, show me all my approved work orders. We've got three of them right in front of us. 